Welcome to Mathematics with AMS, Grade 12, Financial Mathematics. And in this video, we're going to look at the revision of Grade 10 and 11 work content, Part 1. Don't forget to give, to, to give me a huge like and to subscribe. Right, in Grade 12, Financial Maths, you need to do annuities, and there's two types, namely present value and future value annuities. In grade 11, you've learned nominal and effective rates, but it's also applicable in grade 12. And then, of course, sinking funds. Right, let's look at the introduction to grade 10 and 11 content. So there we look at growth, decay, and the different types of growth and decay. Now, what is growth? Growth refers to an income in quantity. The quantity may be an amount of money, a population of people, animals, plants, bacteria, etc. Decay refers to a decrease or loss in value of a quantity. Now, the types of growth or decay. You first look at simple interest, which of course is growth. This is when the increase during each period is a percentage or fraction of the initial value E. If the rate of increase is R percent or I, when I is R over 100, then for a period 1, the increase is interest times the, the, the N value times the principal amount. The total value A after N periods is given by A equals to the initial value P plus the total increase in values. Therefore, A equals to P plus I times P times N. And then to write in a different form, take out P as a common factor, and you get A equals to P times 1 plus I N. So this is called simple growth formula. Compound growth, this is when the increase during each period is a percentage or fraction of the new total value, where the new total value is equal to previous total value plus the increase. If the initial value is P and the rate of increase is I as before, then increase at end of period is interest times principal amount, which is principal amount plus I times P, take out P as a common factor, and you get 1 plus I. So for convenience, we let small letter A be 1 plus I. So the total new value will be P times A. Similarly, new total value at the end of period 2, that on the next page. So previous total value plus increase. So it is PA plus IPA. You take out PA is a common factor and you get 1 plus I, which of course is PA times A, which is PA squared. So generally, the total value A at the end of N periods will be P times A to the power N. Therefore, A is P plus 1 plus I to the power of N. So because remember, A is 1 plus I. So this is called compound growth formula. Simple decay, opposite of simple growth. So this is when the decrease during each period is a percentage or fraction of the initial value P. It is not difficult to see that a simple decay formula will be A equals to P, 1 minus I times N. Compound decay, opposite of compound growth, it is when the decrease during each period is a percentage or fraction of the previous value and not initial value. So again, it is not difficult to see that compound decay formula is A equals to P into 1 minus I to the power of N. Let's look at a, a, a worked example on growth. Mexico had a population of 110,6 million people in 2010 or 2010. What will its population be in 10 years if the rate of natural increase is 1,4%? So the solution, case of compound growth is A equals to P into 1 plus I to the power N. So therefore P is 110,6. And of course I is 0,014 to the power of 10. Remember, you must, I is 
r over 100 so 1,4 divided by 100 gives you 0 0,014 and of course they said uh, in 10 years time so therefore the answer is 127,1 million people right calculate the future value of investment of 10,000 rand after three years at an interest rate of 18 percent per annum compounded annually quarterly half yearly monthly and daily let's first look at annually so t0 that's your timeline t0 up to t1 t2 and t3 remember they said over three years so therefore it's 10,000 into 1 plus 0 comma 180 remember divide by a hundred so to the power of three because they said it is calculated after three years so therefore the answer is 16,430,32 rand or 16,430 rand and 32 cents so this one is done annually if it's done quarterly then you must remember there are four quarters in one year so therefore three years will consist of 12 quarters so please don't forget it and even the interest rate will be shared over four periods so therefore 0 0.18 divided by four so don't forget that so that explains the formula a equals to 10,000 into 1 plus 0 0.18 divided by 4 to the power of 12 which is a equals to 16,958 rand and 14 cents now half yearly you must remember two half years in one year so therefore times three will give you six half years so 0 0.18 must be divided by two now because it's half yearly don't forget so it is 0 0.09 so therefore the formula 10,000 into 1 plus 0 0.018 divide by 2 to the power of 6 and therefore the answer is 16,771 rand and if you have to do it monthly then it is 12 months in one year so therefore 3 times 12 will give you 36 months so therefore 0, 0,18 divided by 12 this time so it is 0, 0,0125 interest and of course Therefore, it is 10,000 into 1 plus 0, 0,18 over 12 to the power 36. So, therefore, the answer is 17,091 rand and 40 cents. And then lastly, daily. So, there are 365 days in a year, of course, if you don't consider a leap year. So, therefore, there are 365 times 3, which is 1,095 days in 3 years. And now it is 0, 0,18 divided by 365 which is 0, 0,00049315. So a 10,000 into 1 plus 0, 0,18 over 365 to the power of 1,095. And that gives you answer of 17,157 rand and 78 cents. This is Ahmed Suleiman with the Mathematics with M's. Don't forget to give me a huge like and please don't forget to subscribe subscription is free